Once the notebook generation job has been completed, a link to the Jupyter Notebook will be displayed on the BioGP's website, including a summary of the signature, the, the analysis plugins used to generate the notebook, as well as options to share the notebook on social media. We can click on Open Notebook to visualize the results of the analysis itself. As you can notice, the Jupyter Notebook is displayed statically using the Jupyter and vViewer service, and we also provide an option to toggle the code which will then display the source code in Python and R used to generate the notebook. The first section of the notebook contains a brief introduction, as well as a table of contents showing the different sections contained in the notebook. We then have a results section which contains the results of the analysis itself. So in the first part, we can see a brief preview of the dataset that has been loaded containing gene level counts with rows representing genes and samples on the columns. And the user can also download the dataset in a text format by clicking on the button. Information is also provided regarding the metadata and describing the samples. So in this case, we can observe that the dataset contains three samples generated from primary normal melanocytes and the remaining nine samples generated from three different melanoma cell lines. And similarly, the user can download the metadata to a text file using the button shown here. By scrolling down, we can observe the first of the results generated using the PCA plugin. In this case, each point represents a sample in the RNA-seq dataset, with red indicating the metastatic samples and blue indicating the normal samples. By hovering over each point, we can also observe more information about the samples, including the metadata, such as the stage and cell type. And we can also observe that the separation between samples in the normal state and the metastatic state based on gene expression is quite good. We can then scroll down and reveal the second plugin results, which is the interactive heat map displayed using cluster grammar. So in this case, the rows represent different genes determined by filtering based on variants. Columns indicate the samples, and the colors indicate different groups to the, sam the samples belong to. In this case, we can see that the normal samples tend to cluster together, and samples generated using different metastatic cell lines also cluster together. And the user can optionally zoom in the heat map and hover over each individual point to reveal more information about the expression of each gene in the samples themselves. The following plugin displays an analysis of the sizes in terms of reads of each samples. So this histogram on the x-axis displays the number of reads in millions for each sample in the dataset. So in this case, we can observe that uh, all the samples contain between 30 to over 35 million reads, indicating that the quality of the RNA-seq alignment is good. The next plugin displays the results of a differential expression analysis. So in this case, we have a table displaying information about each gene, including the full changes, the average expression, p-value, and false discovery rates for the comparison between the normal state and the metastatic state. And as before, the user has the option to download the signature to a text file. The same information is then used to display the volcano plot. So in this case, we have full changes on the x-axis and negative log 10 p-values on the y-axis. Points represent genes, where red indicates significant upregulation in metastatic samples compared to normal samples, and blue indicates significant downregulation in metastatic samples compared to normal samples. And again, the user can hover over each point to reveal more information about the gene and the statistics associated to it, and also optionally zoom into the plot to have more detailed access to the results. Once the differential expression analysis has been performed, the upregulated and downregulated genes can then be uploaded to the enrichment analysis web server known as Enricher to identify biological terms which are overrepresented in each given gene set. So in this case, BioGPs provides links to Enricher web pages which contain enrichment results for both upregulated and downregulated gene sets, which your user can interactively explore using the web server. The same information is also used 
to display these bar charts in the following section, known as the Gene Ontology Enrichment Analysis section. So in this case, the bars represent uh, terms, and the x-axis shows the enrichment score as calculated using Enricher. And by hovering over each bar, the user can reveal more information about the statistics associated to the enrichment results, such as p-values, false discovery rates, as well as the number of genes which have been uh, identified as overlapping with the specified gene set. So in our specific case, we can observe an upregulation in genes involved in neurogenesis in the metastatic cell lines compared to the control cell lines. As before, we can also have the option to download the enrichment results to a text file using the download button shown here. Similarly, we also have results using pathway enrichment analysis, which involves different libraries. And in this case, we can also see an upregulation of genes involved in neural crest differentiation and the ability to download the results using the button shown here. The following plugin is the L1000 CDS Square Query, which allows to identify L1000 small molecule treatments, which can either mimic or reverse the input gene expression signature. As before, BioGPS provides links to the L1000 CDS Square web server, which display the top signatures, which can either mimic or reverse the metastatic versus normal gene expression signature used as an input. The results are also uh, used to display these bar charts, which allow to identify the most frequent molecules, which either can mimic or reverse the signature. So in this case, for example, we observe galdanomycin, a known anti-tumor drug to often reverse uh, the input signature. And as before, we can also download the results shown here. And the final plugin for today's demo is VL1000 FWD Query, which allows to query these gene expression signatures against the same database generated from the Lynx project. So in this case, each point in this visualization represents a different signature with red indicating more similarity to the input signature, and blue indicating that the signatures tend to reverse the observed input. The user can also optionally color these visualization using different approaches. For example, if we color according to the mode of action, we can reveal different modes of action for the clusters, such as NF-kappa-B pathway inhibitors, protein synthesis inhibitors, or dopamine receptor antagonists. And the purple points uh, shown here indicate the top signatures which reverse the input, while the blue points indicate the top signatures which mimic the input. The final section of the Jupyter Notebook generated using BioJupies contains the methods, including a detailed description of the dataset, the normalization techniques, and parameters and references for each of the plugins used to generate the notebook.